welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a video that's been requested quite a few times and it's all about the Juliet Has A Gun fragrance brand which is kind of niche I guess. Um, it's an independent brand and they're also a cruelty free brand. Um, so I have the um, tester set of all their 12 fragrances and I also have a little sample of their brand new one, Lipstick Fever, which has just come out this year. But before we get into the fragrances, then a big hello to everyone if you are new to my channel. Welcome, I'm all about fragrances, so check out my hundreds of other videos. And if you're a regular and you haven't subscribed yet, then do hit that subscribe button, show your support, I really appreciate it. And as always, I will leave links down below to where you can get these perfumes, US, UK, Europe, Australia, and also I just bought this new top. It's actually a play suit type thing, and I'm just loving it from River Island. So if I can find the link, I'll leave that as well. So Juliet has a gun is quite an unusual name. It's a French name, and it's actually the grandson of Nina Rishi. Um, so someone where perfumes, you know, run in the family and it's inspired by Romeo and Juliet, hence the name. But I guess it's like a modern Juliet, you know, Juliet has a gun. And I believe Francis Kirk de Jan has also been involved with him, Romano, Rishi, in some of these formulations as well. So it's very, you know, French, perfumery, dynasty. Um, they they won't, won't release something unless they're really happy with it, I would assume. You know, they put a lot of thought into it. it it's not like some of these brands that are owned by Unilever or Procter & Gamble or something and I feel like sometimes they just release whatever. I think all of the perfumes have been thought about and they each have quite a distinct personality um, and they're quite for quite like strong independent woman I would say whereas Juliet has a gun of fragrance. Right so let's get into the perfume. So I have to say Lipstick Fever. I really like it. I wasn't sure what I was going to make of it because I don't love all of the Juliet Has A Gun fragrances, some of them just aren't my personal taste. Um, but when I saw the name Lipstick Fever, I love the name and then I love the bottle, like the red. Um, and then when I saw the ingredients, I was like, oh, I wonder what it's going to be. But I have to say, I do really like it. And I have been really impressed with it. So it, it does, first of all, it's correct it really does smell like lipstick if you get your lipstick you smell it that's what this smells like it's a slightly powdery palmer violet violet powdery makeup smell but what's weird is that it reminds me a lot of le petit robe noir from guerlain and the reason why that's weird is because that is a cherry perfume and this doesn't have any cherry in but what it does have is raspberry so this has that um, syrupy raspberry, kind of like the syrupy notes of Lancome Midnight Rose, like the syrupy notes of the Putty Robe Noir, and I think that's what I'm getting. It's like a raspberry liqueur type smell. It's not sweet, it's like warming and feminine and pretty as well as all this violet and this very lipstick smell. It's super feminine and I, when I was wearing this yesterday I just did one spray and I could still really smell it um, I think a good sort of five hours I'd say I could still really smell it on me and then even sort of eight nine ten hours later you could I couldn't smell it all around me but if I sort of you know went like that I could still smell it was still there on the skin so I think if you did quite a lot of sprays you know three four sprays then it would probably have really good projection and 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 lasting power as well so if you like Le Petit Robe Noir if you like Midnight Rose if you like violets I think you'll really like this perfume it's really 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 nice and I really like it so that's lipstick fever so that isn't in the discovery set because um it's brand new so the discovery set really nice so it has this on the outside then it says mercy and then what's really nice is it has this guidebook to all the different fragrances in here and then it has all the different fragrances and it even has a little Juliet has a gun um what they what, I can't remember what these are called cardboard smelly things <laughs> so I think what I will do is I'll start with not a perfume um, this is 
month, I think they're bestseller. So not a perfume. Well, first of all, it is a perfume, so don't worry, it is a fragrance. Um, this gets talked about a lot. The idea is that this has ambroxin, um, which is a synthetic note as the main note. And the concept is that that works on differently on different people's skin. But don't, don't get too carried away with that concept, right? Because what that doesn't mean is that you spray it on one person's skin, it smells like strawberries. On another person's skin, it smells like oud. On another person's skin, it smells like, you know, leaves. Like, it's not that clever, right? <laughs> it's, um, it still does have a smell that... Um, it might be slightly different on different people, but there is still like a common scent. It also has something called Cetalox in there as well. So, but this is the bestseller and it's very, very hyped. And in my opinion, maybe a little bit overhyped. So to me, it always smells kind of the same to me, in my opinion. And it, it, it smells like a warm skin scent type smell. It's definitely to me it smells feminine but it doesn't smell floral it doesn't smell fruity or woody or anything it just sort of smells like a clean skin if that makes sense just like the smell of a human <laughs> it's not majorly heavy um and it, it, i think if you you could just spray a load of this on your skin and you just have this sort of slightly powdery musky skin scent that just followed you around all day and it almost like wouldn't smell like you were wearing a fragrance it would just smell like your smell if that makes sense so it's good if you're looking for something that's quite neutral clean simple smelling and it does stick around but it, it does last but the projection isn't really strong i i have never found it to be that strong a projection especially compared to some of the others in the range but it is the best seller and um we did sell juliet has a gun when i in the shop where i work selling perfume and it definitely was the one that everyone came in and asked for like it was kind of famous and people really liked it when they tried it if they were into this kind of thing if you're looking for something a bit sort of niche that other people don't have then i totally get it um but for me it smells a bit what the word is is it boring like i but i have my personal preference is quite fruity perfumes that are interesting and sexy and fun and stuff so this isn't any of those it's i guess it's quite a grown-up smell and um i'm a bit of a uh, peter pan <laughs> so next let's go for lady vengeance so this Lady Vengeance is a rosy lavender. It's kind of a bit like a L'Occitane type smell, like walking into a L'Occitane shop. It does have some patchouli in, but for me, I get I get lavender, I get rose, a little bit powdery. It's it's feminine. It's it's I'd say more daytime. If you like your lavenders, you like your aromatic perfumes, then Lady Vengeance is for you. But if I I think if I think about the name Lady Vengeance and the bottles all black, I think it's going to be really sexy or really heavy or really night time but actually this is kind of like a pretty flowery smell um so it's more like lady flowery or lady aromatic lady lavender um would probably be a more appropriate name in my opinion um but it's sophisticated again it's grown up it's it's yeah it's a day in the south of france surrounded by lavender fields the one that isn't in the set is they do make a kind of stronger version of it called vengeance extreme which is just basically heavier so next let's do the one called mmm <laughs> it's literally just four m's and then three dots so this one is the gourmand it's really sweet but it's a warm fudgy sweetness it has caramel in so very very warm to me this is autumn winter or this is night time it's a vanilla caramel you know like walking into a, a fudge shop or a caramel shop that's what this smells like it does have a bit of raspberry in but to me I, I i don't get that really as much as i get this this fudgy caramel so if you like your caramel perfumes you know prada candy victor and rolf bomb bomb um then i you'll like this it's this is younger it's sweeter it's definitely like sexy and yeah 
I um, I like it. It's one of my favourites. So now there's a couple of ouds, so let us look at them. So first of all we have Midnight Oud, and I'm going to use a card for this because you guys know I'm not an oud person. Um, this one comes in a really nice bottle. A um, It's like really gold, shiny bottle, really stands out in the range. Woo! It's oud. It's a lot of oud. Yeah, very, very um, good for lasting, strong. Um, but you really, really have to like oud. This is like 80% of the smell is oud and then a little bit of rose and patchouli. But very, very oudy. So they then have another perfume, which is literally called another oud. <laughs> so call it as you see it. Juliet has a gun. That there's no mincing around with these French people. So another oud. This is a little bit more subtle. It doesn't have the floral notes. So and that makes it a bit calmer and a little bit less intense. And there's even a little bit of raspberry and citrus in here, but it's still very much oudy. It's just subtler. I'd say this is like 50% less strong. Maybe you'd wear this during the day and then the midnight one at night, hence why it's called midnight. But yeah, it's just a, a simple oud. Um, but yeah, you really have to like oud. <laughs> so next let's do sunny side up. This comes in a nice sort of white and yellow bottle. So this is a nice coconut perfume. It's a tropical coconut smell. There's a little bit of a woody note in there, but predominantly it's coconut. So this is definitely a, you know, summer vibes. If you like your bronze goddess, you like your Dolce Garden, then this is for you. It does have good lasting power. I have sprayed this quite a few times. Um, you know, when I see it, I tend to reach for this one. Um, then now maybe I'll reach for Lipstick Fever. You know, it's just a nice coconut, really. It's it's fun and playful smell. It's not take itself too seriously. In the little booklet, it describes it really nicely. It's, it calls it a happy therapy to enlighten your day and lift up your mind because we all deserve a little walk on the sunny side. Oh, no, oh, that's nice, isn't it? So next, let's do Moscow Mule. So Moscow Mule, if you're not aware, is the name of a cocktail. And this is inspired by that cocktail. Now this is a super fresh lime. I really like this. It reminds me of that limey Moscow Mule or like a margarita type smell. You know, that fresh zingy lime. There's also some ginger in here and ginger is an ingredient of Moscow Mule. So that, I guess, helps give it the line that, that zing, that sharpness. Um, but I don't really get that much ginger in the smell. I, I get, I basically just get loads of lime. It also has like other citrus notes in, so it's very citrusy. But what's nice about Moscow Mule is that so many citrusy perfumes don't last. Like it's hard to find one that's fresh. And sometimes the lime ones can be a bit masculine. Whereas this is just like that pure, fresh lime so I would recommend this for people that are looking for a citrus perfume that sticks around and it's just a bit fun and different and if you like that fresh margarita Moscow Mule lime then you'll love this you know definitely daytime definitely summer and it's quite neutral you know you could wear this in the office to to, the, to work you know it's not um it's not in your face it's just like that fresh spring summer day of of lime so next let's do citizen queen and this comes in a silver packaging so this is a violet rose but it's not like lipstick fever this doesn't smell like lipstick it's very very powdery and um, so you have to like those almost musky powdery scent and i'm not gonna lie to you guys i find that this smells like an old lady <laughs> i'm so sorry i don't like it this is when you, you think of a powdery perfume right you think of a really modern powdery perfume like Nostiso rodriguez really nice this is the old-fashioned powdery smell this Honestly, I swear my grandma wears something just like this. Or, you know those old-fashioned powder puffs? Like, that's what this smells like to me. Um, it's not something I, I like. Um, but, so sorry about that. But I, I'm sure plenty of people do like it. Let's read what it says in the book. A mysterious and addictive aldehyde sheepra. Yeah, it's super sheepra. At the crossroads of modern and classic perfumery. Well, there you go. They've even written it there that it's that it's classic. 
old fashioned. This is modern. Um, it's got aldehydes in as well, so that sort of Chanel number no. five smell. Um, yeah, this is an old fashioned smell in Sophie's opinion. So next let's do the one called Anyway. This is a kind of like pearlescent white silvery bottle, very nice. So this is another lime, but it's not as sharp as the Moscow Mule. And it has Neuroli in. So to me this is, this is like a very light daytime smell. You want something pretty, Neuroli, fresh, citrusy, slightly floral, innocent smell. It describes it as inspired by Hedione. Don't know what that means. Anyway, is a floral, citrus, musky, nonchalant and easy to wear. Yes, definitely easy to wear. It embodies a certain optimism ready to unite with the feminine as much as the masculine. So I think what they're saying is that it's a unisex perfume. Um, though I actually think they're all unisex, to be honest. Um, but to me, this is just, yeah, it's every day. It, it doesn't excite me or knock me over. It's just pretty and nice neuroli lime. Pretty nice. Okay, so now let's do gentlewoman so gentlewoman ironically to me smells very unisex maybe that's why it's called gentlewoman because that's like a mix of woman and gentleman i don't know it's um it's that classic uh citrus unisex smell um kind of like a, a florist lemony smell uh, the old um eau sauvage from dior that not the new one it describes it as a masculine cologne dedicated to women the note revolves around the neuroli essence, the orange blossom absolute, and the delicious almond essence. I don't smell any almond. No, it smells like a neuroli bergamot. It smells like bergamot, basically. Um, I also has some lavender in, actually, and that is another common ingredient in men's perfume. So, yes, this is definitely for someone that, that it likes those more masculine-type smells. Uh, aromatic citrus, I'd describe this as. Okay, so next we have Miss Charming. So Miss Charming is a charming rose. So if you like your rosy perfumes, think of like a Chloe perfume or the new Rose and Roses from Dior or even Miss Dior actually. It's it's a it's a pretty rose. It smells very much of roses. It's 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 feminine. You know, this could be a good sort of wedding smell. You know, it's very, you know, it's that kind of traditional rose smell. It does have fruity notes in it, but I don't really get them. I, I really just get mainly rose. It describes it as a musky floral, fruity fragrance. I would describe it as just musky floral. Uh, the portrait of a young, natural and innocent woman. Hmm, wedding. But nonetheless surprising. If she's a rose, don't forget she also got spines. I assume that's a <laughs> translation from French that it should be, don't forget she also has uh, thorns um because it's written in french and then it's translated in english so yeah nice rose like i it's too rosy for me um it's too much of a musky rose rather than a fresh rose for me but if you like roses then you'll like it so that just leaves us with the one that was released last year called vanilla vibes and you might have seen I did a video on this. I um, I went to the launch of it at Harvey Nichols here in London. And this is a really nice vanilla salty perfume. It's a nice, yeah, it's, if you like your um, uh, Olympia perfume, Olympia Legend, the Paco Rabanne fragrances, you'll like this. And this is like, it's like a classier, um, in my opinion, better version of the Olympia. It's got that sandy saltiness of the desert, but then very vanilla. But it's not like a sweet candy shop vanilla at all. It's a, yeah, it's a skin scent vanilla. It's sexy vanilla. It's a nice one, guys. If you're looking for a vanilla, but you don't want it to be like immature or sweet, you don't want to go for like a Britney Spears type smell. It's a really nice, nice vanilla. I think it'd be good in the evenings. It's quite sort of sexy and interesting. So that's it guys, that's it. Let me know what you think of the Juliet Has A Gun range. I do think my favourite is the brand new Lipstick Fever, I really love it. 
but I do really love the Moscow Mule as well. The Vanilla Vibes is cool. You know, there's some really cool ones in there. So check them out if you haven't heard of them. I guess they are a bit niche, but getting more and more sold in more and more places. And of course, all online, I'll leave the links. But yeah, so let me know what you think, what your favorite is. But thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.